Okay. Um. UI mostly looks okay. Uh, you've got your defensive CDs uh, tracking mostly important things, which is good. You've got you know your kicks here, trinkets here, good stuff. Um, is this just more CDs here? Or, like what is this? Like why are we tracking trinket twice? Ice block twice, that sort of thing. Um, there's yeah, it, this is this is weird. It's two add-ons doing the same thing. You can probably just delete this, I would say. Um, here you can see enemy CDs. Uh, are we tracking their trinkets anywhere? I can't see their trinkets. I don't know if you have a separate add-on for that that's going to show them, but... Uh, we need to track trinkets here, here, and here, ideally. Uh, you can also potentially do this in two rows so that it doesn't head so far over this way. Because the more you head over this way with cool lands, the further from you know your area of focus that you're going to be looking for this sort of stuff. Um, again, this probably could do with coming over a little bit to like here. Right? Uh, there's no reason for this shit to be all the way over here when the rest of your focus is here, here, and just generally like here, right? Um, I would say you can also move these down here underneath because this generally is not an area where you're looking at stuff in the game that much, whereas this actually could be. Um, so this, is, this real estate is worth more than this real estate, essentially. Uh, but that's a minor note. Uh, your bars look pretty good. Um, you've generally got most of your cooldown shown in the bottom area. I'm guessing you're hiding most of your non-cooldown abilities and that you know the binds for them. This is just a random shite. Um, so I would say that that's mostly fine. Um, no real gripes there. Talents, what are we running? So we've got Dome, Radiant Stark against Boomy, Lock, Priest. Um, I think this is fine. You can also potentially run Trinity instead of Dome against this. Uh, but as RMP, it's not insane. Um, but it's... Already loving the depends on like personal, personal playstyle. One dollar Rob. Thank you for the five, dude. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, it, it comes down to personal playstyle a bit, I think. Um, whether or not you run Trinity or Dome there, I think Dome is 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 fine too. Um, but the main ones you want is Trinity and Dark. Double Dispel, not that important against uh, Affliction Lock because you can't Dispel that regularly. Um, so you've got friendly nameplates and enemy nameplates. Um... Be careful of having both shown. If you're comfortable with it, it's okay, but... Like... Sometimes it can feel, at least for me, a little bit overwhelming having friendly nameplates and enemy nameplates shown. Uh, and I find it hard sometimes to track where everything is in the battle because it's like... There's no real distinction between the two teams. Since everything is class colors. If you're fine with it, then... You know, stick with it. But if you are feeling overwhelmed sometimes, that might be a, a, a reason why. Um, so let's see what happens with the opener here. So no one gets a sap. What happens? Why does no one get sapped? Umi's probably in stealth, right? Let's see. So I would say here, you probably want to try and kill Warlock, right? With Sap on Priest and Foresight, like Trinket and PS from Priest on the Warlock, and then potentially do a swap on Priest with Combust. Um, with uh, a Fear or whatever on the Boonkin, or maybe an MC. Okay, so you just like get in combat. What have I done? 
Somehow I've changed to another video. Impress impressive. Um, so yeah, the boomy just comes out and gets you. Just try to make sure you're hugging that pillar really tight so that the boomy can't do that, so that they can't get in combat before the sap. Uh, sap on the priest is decent here. To be honest, the fact that the, mo the boomy comes out, um, you can just potentially door on top of him um, and fear him right off the bat. Uh, and essentially what he has to do then, like if you here, wait, where, when does he come out? Let's see. Here. Boomy's out now, okay? This is unfortunate because the Boomy gets in combat, so the priest gets in combat with Seer and the rogue can't sap him, so the rogue gets forced to blind him here. Right, he's in blind now. Uh, if you stay over here, you're losing the Warlock. You can door straight onto the Druid. You're going to instantly force out Rubeam from the Warlock if he, up, up from the Druid if he's good. If he's not, you get a fear on him. There's no peels for the Warlock on the go. And then you just mind games the Warlock. And the Warlock has to CSU. If he doesn't, then he's going to have to use considerable CDs. Uh, instead, Priest gets blinded. Priest trinkets the blind. Okay, your trinkets are shown. Good. Um, the Warlock also trinkets. And the Priest uses PS. So the Priest is dead next go. Um... Like, this game is already over. Um, like, essentially all you have to do now is live. And let the mage farmers combust back. And then the next go, you just do a go on the priest. Um, with probably cheap shot on either the lock on the, or the druid and then kidney on the priest. Um... And then let the mage, like, sheep the warlock or whatever off. Uh, and you just fear the druid. Um, and the priest is just going to die on this go. To be honest, you can maybe even just see it, see us a clone or a heal from the druid and the priest is still going to die. You may not even need fear on Uh You probably won't even need to contribute damage to the go. Uh, the priest will still die if you press dark and the mage will solo him with combust. Let's see how it plays out. You do go on the boomy instead with a DR kidney. So the warlock trinkets. Uh, and you just go boomy with a kick in the bomb anyway. Which is, I don't hate this, to be honest. You're forcing out another trinket from the boomy. Awesome. Um, did the warlock use wall? No. Okay, so the warlock still has wall. Uh, I think you're doing a good job with your positioning. You're staying near the pillar. You're not pushing too far out. The Warlock hasn't dotted you, um, which makes things easier for you because you actually still have mobility until you get dotted. Um, you could try and remove this from the Rogue. I don't know if you've got... if you're tra I feel like your UI does not lend itself well to tracking UI. I think if you get rid of these and add big debuffs, then, you know, if you get rid of this shit... And get big debuffs up here so that you can see big uh, see UA a little bit better. Then you'll be able to see whether or not you can dispel things like this, um, like this shit. Oh, you have it in, inside the frame. I see now. Okay. Uh, you've doored in. So the problem here is you're dooring in to try and fear off nothing on the priest. So the fact that you don't get kicked on this already is a miracle. Um, but like somebody needs to use something on the priest. The priest is still on stun DR. And you guys are doing a go with kidney on warlock without any sort of cover on the priest or the druid. So you need to make sure you're always covering the other two players with someone. So like you could just door fear the druid on this go and the mage could go and DB sheep the priest by himself. And to be honest you probably just win the game there. Or at the very least you force out the warlock wall after the stuns. You might still get there now, I don't know. Instead, what happens is your mage just walks up to the priest and gets feared without a DB. I don't know how he fails at getting that, but okay, he's just like fireballing and gets feared. So, like, your priest should be focusing, uh, your mage should be focusing there on CCing the priest. The fact that he doesn't is uh, a yikes. Druid uses Convoke. You manage to get out of loss. Drop some Radiance. Um, I think those radiances are fine, considering the situation. So you actually still managed to get the Warlock's Wall. Uh, he, there was no reason for him to use it there. Um, but the fact that you got it is good for you guys. Um, why have we force block here? What's happened there? 
So the mage is just tanking damage in the open. He should be... Potentially, you should grip back here. You get kicked on mend. So you dome him in the open. Honestly, I don't think you need to dome here. You've already forced the Warlock's Wall out. You're not a PvE comp. You don't need to still be in. Uh, the Druid still has Incarn up. So you have this. And you have this. Um, the Druid also use Convokes. Like, you can literally just grip the mage back here. And then run around here and stand here and lost everything. And the Warlock is forced to port, probably, if he wants to do anything, which... He probably won't because he has no CDs left. But if he does, he's... Um, he's a little bit too, uh, he's a little bit crazy. Uh, but this way you're gonna, you're gonna minimize as much damage as possible on your mage and you're gonna preserve his, his block. Um, and your dome for that, for that matter. So your rogue is running, he's, he's doing right. The mage is running the other way instead of to you. Uh, a grip there would have been fine. Um, or just, you know, the mage not wandering off randomly. Um... So you're safe again now. Druid Bash clones you. You Trinket and Fear him. This Fear is not terrible. Uh, you don't have Trinket now. Um, and I would say that doing this is fine if you're doing a kill go. Um, your Mage has Combust back. Um, so the problem with this go and problem with Trinket and Fearing the Boomy here is again your Mage is not CCing the Priest. He has DB available. He needs to go and get in that priest's face and, and DB fear him, uh, DB sheep him. And then the fear on the boot beginning is really good, right? You're going to make a lot of pressure on this warlock. Um, side note, try to make sure you move things like fort, uh, earth shield, that sort of shit when you do a go. Uh, if you can, the go is going to be that much stronger. It's not always possible to do, but it's something that's definitely like a valuable global. This warlock just went for a random ass run and we actually got sheep on the priest there. So because... I think the Warlock is really low here, right? He gets... He's, he's still on Kidney DR, right? And you've gone for a Sheep on the Priest here. There's no fear on the Druid because you used it already. So, like, everything is out of sync. You guys need to really focus on, like, talking and trying to sync everything up at the same time. And if you do, this Warlock 100% dies in this go. Like, no matter what. Instead of all doing your own thing, you know? I also feel like you're clicking these to target... Try to keybind them. I feel like I saw some hovering mouse there. So again, we fear Druid just randomly. Uh, with nothing on any other players. Somehow he doesn't get dispelled. Warlock gets PI. Do we go for the dispel on it? We do not. Try to get PIs off if you have some free time. Like, no one's in the immediate uh, danger right now, so. Um, you've Raptured here, and I think it's okay, but you guys aren't under that much pressure. Um, generally, I try to save the Rapture for the Dark Soul from the Warlock. If you can do that, then you are going to be safe for it. Uh, and then you just insta-run back and loss when he does it. Whoa, 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 what is this combust? What has happened here? Your rogue steps back. You have mind games on the warlock. You don't have any CC on the priest. You don't have any CC on the druid. And your mage just burns fucking combust into the warlock. Just fucking YOLO. I mean, that's, that's not good. Priest death the sheep. Wait, did he? Let's see. He's still on DR, dude. Never mind. I think he did actually, yeah. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's a little unfortunate. I mean, Mage needs to be a bit chill on the trigger then if he sees the death on the sheep. Um, I mean, this was again a kill here. You, you want to make sure you're DB sheeping, right? There's no reason to just sheep off nothing. Just blink on top of him, DB, and sheep him. And then Rogue can cover the other two guys. And then you can fear off one on the Druid. Um, and... Then, you know, the Warlock's, Warlock's dead, man. There's no way he's living that shit. With Combust. Um, and again, you could also have done a Priest go there. He has no PS, he has no Trinket, right? 
if you just fear the other guys or one of the other guys and random sheep or wrath or whatever on the other guys, then uh, that priest is going to go down to combust for sure. Especially if you dark with it. So I say the main thing that's that's going wrong this game is you just you guys are just not in sync. Uh, your positioning is not bad in general, but you're not you're you're doing the defensive portion of the positioning, right? You're not pushing in at the correct times to do the fear because your team is not like starting it almost. The druid just over pushes in, gets mind games, and dies. Um. Yeah, I mean, a lot of things this game were really messy from both teams. Um, but, like, you guys have the, the kind of the basics almost. Uh, you just, yeah, you need to try to talk to each other more and play as a team. Do the go together, not on your own. Everyone's doing their own thing on the go. Everyone's doing their own go on their own sort of thing. And because you're playing at lower rating... Uh, you're forcing CDs from it where sometimes teams wouldn't need to use that CD. So if you face a better team, they won't use it and you'll find that you're not forcing CDs fast enough because your goes are not clean. So people can be disruptive and stop damage, stop CC. Um, and keep people alive without cooldowns. <laughs> Bro, you have to chill. I love it. Right, uh, we're gonna go next. We're not gonna watch this one. We're gonna watch this one. Um, so I hope all that makes some sense for that game. There's not that much for me to talk about um, at the moment on that one, I would say. Your positioning, as I said, was, was decent defensively. Um... Just be aware of when they're using cooldowns and try to run against a Warlock and, and a Moonkin as well. Uh, rather than like doming in the middle and tanking it. <laughs> um, right, so now you're against Frost TSG as RMP. This is an interesting matchup for sure. Um... To be honest, I would say kill targets are probably Warrior or Pala. Um, you can start potentially with... Maybe like a DB... Maybe like a Sap on the Pala into like a DB on the Warrior or like... Um, yeah, no, Sap on the Pala, DB on the Warrior. And then you kidney the Warrior off, right? And... Most likely the Frost DK got DB too, so you can just like sheep him off the DB. Uh, and then have a clean go on the warrior. And this most likely is going to force the DK to to use something to, to peel. Probably blind or some shit like that. Um, your other option is sap on the DK and then DB, DB sheep on the warrior and then open on Pala. But you can also sap on the Pala and then go on him off it. Um... Problem is the DK is going to be free then and probably AMZ you'll go. Um, but yeah, let's see what, what you go for. Can this priest carry 2v2 or 3v3? Um, honestly, it really depends. As RMP, it depends a lot on the Mage Rogue. Like you can play, you can do your portion defensively and you can try and do your cross CC and your damage. But if your team does not set up the go for you, then it's very hard for you to uh, get in there and do the cross CC without a good player stopping you. Because you just have to waddle in. So you guys are opening on Pala with, wait, let's see. Too far back. So we had Sap on the DK, like we were talking about, and Cheap Shot on Warrior. Uh, and then cheap shot on Pala. And then the warrior gets sheeped off the cheap shot. Uh, this is okay. It gives the Pala some sort of window to pre-use slash run. But I think that you can be fast enough after... after but essentially, what can happen is once you sap the DK, the warrior can blade storm. Um, 
if he blade storms the cheap shot, you're not getting sheep on him. If he does this uh, and you open the pallet, he just gets intervened. The pallet doesn't use anything on the go. Uh, this is what can go wrong with the opener. If the warrior gets cheap shot and you get sheep on him, the pallet has that window because of the two globals that the rogue used to get the sap and the cheap shot on the warrior um, before the pallet, you know, gets any sort of stun on him. You can kind of counter this with a DB on the pallet at the same time, potentially, I would say. Uh, so that he can't pre-use anything. And then you drop a kidney on him out of the DB so that it's like there's no gap. Mage drops combust and somebody's trinketing. Probably the warrior to use something for the pala. But you maybe can just get the bubble in the opener like this. And trade it for combust, which is completely fine. Um, so, so far your opener is successful, right? Uh, the only thing I will say, you've got cheap shot on the pala instead of a kidney. You want the kidney because it's longer, but... So the, the DK actually uses his trinket to peel. This team is somewhat uncoordinated. The DK uses his trinket to peel with the AMZ uh, for your mages combust. Which is valid, but he needs to do it faster because your pala's already fucking low. Uh, or rather, their pala's already low. And it looks like he also doesn't have beacon on himself, so he's not going to have save by light proc. So he would actually just probably just die uh, if he didn't bubble here because the, the barrier was late from the DK. So you managed to force that bubbler in the opener, which is which is great. You've actually moved in really far for basically no reason. Like you can stop almost here. Right? You can MD that ramp. You can MD here from where you are now, and it will hit the pala there. Which is fine. Uh unless you're intending to run in and fear this DK off the sap, which is good too. Let's see if you do it. You go for the MD. Somehow nobody kicks you. This is a fucking miracle. Like the DK 100 percent should kick you there. And then you get Hodge. So here, if you fear, you're most likely going to get Lich born out of the DK, I would say. Instead of MDing. Because this pallet is going to top himself regardless now, I'd say. He's winged as well. Oops. Um, so I think your mistake there is not fearing the DK off the CC. Off the SAP. You 100% can do that. Um, it's fine if you do. And the warrior gets dispelled by the pallor as well. Uh, the DK pops all his shit. Uh, so he's got Abomination's Limb up now. He's probably looking to throw out a blind into their AoE stun. Although the pallor already wasted stun on you. So they should have done the go a little bit sooner to be honest. Uh, they have really wasted the stun on you there. And you get the dome out. This is, this is decent but your team is already kind of running pretty well to be honest. So I don't know if the dome was really needed there. Pala's running around with Divine Favor up. You can try and snipe that off with a Dispel. Okay, and now they're doing their go with the Frostworm, but it's super scuffed. Uh, and there was no blind to start it. So their go was really poor. If they did a good go there, you'd be probably Trinket Doming. Um, but yeah, their team kind of messed up. Like if, if here, where is it? Too far. Here, right. If, if you... So the DK, what does he, does he actually just... The DK trinket, yo, if you, if you fear here on his trinket, like if you're looking to fear out of the sap, you're going to be ready to do it. He's going to get the AMZ anyway, but you could have definitely feared that. Um, you should be expecting the DK to kick this MD. If he kicks this MD and the Pala dispels the warrior, they're going to insta do a go on you and you have no holy school. So you can't dome, you can't rapture. They're going to do a lot of punishment to you. So be very careful with that MD. That's very risky MD. Um, it would have been fine if you were max range, but you pushed in like you wanted a fair, and then you changed your mind and went for the MD instead. Um, and generally, I feel like MDing doesn't do that much work at the moment. Pallas usually just top themselves anyway, because it's mostly to get them out of the stun. Uh, I like the grip on the rogue. That's good. Get some away from the warrior. Um... Can't see if he has Avatar or not. Uh, they do a bad restun on you. Pallad running around with Divine Favor again. We still haven't had any sort of fear this whole time. You've been pushed in so much and you haven't feared. There's no reason for you to be pushed in this much if you're not fearing. Like That's the only reason for you to be in. Um, ideally, this team wants you guys to be stacked because of Chill Streak. So if you're far away, they have to grip you to do it. And that gives you guys an opening... Because you have basically the travel time of the grip to see, okay, he's gripping me now. They're going to blind and then they do their little AoE go. 
And they do this once a minute. Uh, Mage Diard. I was going to say everything, but it wasn't everything, was it? Let me see. Okay, so here, off this cheap shot, I would say you want to fear right now. There's no reason not to fear him. Because you're hitting the DK as well. Which, what's the mage trying to sheep? I guess he was trying to sheep the pallet off the cheap shot. Be ready. When you're when the pallet gets stunned, if you're in a position to fear, uh, look at your mage and talk to your mage. Um, if he's going to land the sheep, let him land it. Again, shit like this where he's going to get stopped a lot. Let him land it. It's fine. Um, but be ready for him not to. Because you can fear the pallet there and then he can... And then the DK's feared as well, right? And then he can fear out most likely. Um, instead, he just like fucking panic DBs and then we just do like some scuff DR fear. Into a fucking banner, you know? Like everything was just like jank there. And then again, you're just like waddling around in the middle. I would pot say potentially turn off loss of control effects. You don't need them. They just like tunnel vision you basically. I don't like it at all. If it works for you, then go nuts. But I think it's dire. So at this point, the pala has trinket, but no bubble. So you can potentially be looking to do another go on. And warrior has his trinket. So it's the next ghost should look like... Uh, Cheap shot sheep on the warrior. Um, or DB sheep on the warrior. With a fear on the DK. And then a kidney on the pallet at the same moment. That's how the next go should look. At this point in the game. Uh, or you can do a go on the warrior with... Again, the reverse essentially. So you like DB the warrior. Um, with a kidney on the pallet. So the mage can sheep. And a fear on the DK. Or the reverse. You kidney the warrior with a DB sheep on the pallet. Again with a fear on the DK. Uh, so that's your two options right now. Most likely you're going to force out the Warrior's Trinket if you go on him. Um, or maybe if, if you go on the Pala, but more likely the Pala's Trinket at this rating. Because he's going to panic. You've got some weird damage numbers add-on and it's blocking a lot of shit. Like, they hang around for so long. Um... So, here you've just like smited a sheep for no fucking reason. While your mage is trying to do a CC go, the warrior intervenes, is it? Or charges, gets a reflect up, it's just generally being a pain in the ass. And then you door in and get hodged for no reason. What do we door in? We have fear available. Okay, so you door into fear. Um, but the pala's already giga DR'd. Do we even hit the pala? So you door in. Okay, you get the fear on the pala. The pala trinkets. Very questionable from the pala. 100% questionable trinket. He's in kidney, actually, so there's no. Do I like this or not? The problem here, right, is we've randomly blinded the DK on the go as well. Which gets broken by a fireball. Um, so the blind on the DK isn't actually terrible if you're doing a go on the pala because uh, it makes means the pala is probably going to have to trink it. The thing is that the DK doesn't actually have that many peels left for the pala anyway because AMZ is already down. So I don't think the blind is needed. Um, and it gets broken anyway. So now your fear is almost worthless and there's no reason for you to door in anymore. It gets DB'd as well. It's like the most giga DR'd fear on the DK of all time. Look at it. Bomb. Gone. And then you just donate yourself for a hodge. Um, and then your rogue has to evasion. Which comes a little bit late by the looks of it, but it's okay. Um... 
and then you PS them as well, which is not ideal, right? You don't want to try. You don't. You want to try not to overlap cooldowns like that because you're gonna run out. And now you're like doing a half, half go on the warrior, but not really. Warrior does commanding shout. So we're doing, we're giving up on the warrior instantly, and we're going, doing a go on the paler instead. Sheep's on the warrior. So this cheap shot should have been cheap shot sheep on the warrior here. But the warrior is already on DR, so you guys need to like wait for the DR to do the go. Just because the major sheeping shit, panic sheeping shit, trying to live, right? So now he sheeps the DK instead. Warrior has Zerka Rage, you can't fear him full. So this this go is doomed to fail because the warrior gets out of the cheap shot and he now, and he, well, he storm bolts the rogue he, and commanding shouts. He could just intervene the pallor as well, right? And then he's, the pallor's completely fine. Um, was this combust go? Yeah, this was combust go as well. Um, so. To be honest, you should have killed this this Pala through Bop. Like, Bop should come off and he should die with this Combust Go. But because the Warrior is free, he's able to peel for him. This should should have been Warrior Trinket as well, for sure. Um, because the Pala donated his Trinket on the last Kidney that he didn't need to use on. Because he was completely fine. Uh, now they're doing a go. To be honest, the dome is not bad. Like you've you've identified that they want to do a go, I think. Either that, or you're just like shit. My rogue's low, but I think this wasn't a bad bad go. Unfortunately, your rogue does the El Clasico sub two four hundred rogue gameplay move and runs straight out of the dome. Um. This is a sad game to lose because you were in a pretty good spot. Um, like, you guys just need to be more patient and wait for DR. Like, this this is where the warrior gets sheeped, right? This is why he's on DR later. So you just, like, break the sheep for no reason. The warrior, I guess, intervenes the pala here. And the pala just, like, trinkets for no reason at all. I guess because he just wants to hodge you. And they're like, go rogue, man. Go rogue. So then the pal is just like, yeah, man, let's do it. Trinkets the fucking one second fear. Halfway through a kidney while on 100%. And he's like, yeah, man, I got the hodge. Fucking go, go, go. And then the rogue's just like, nope, evasion. Uh, except he uses it like one global late. So he gets fucking creamed before it. But it's all right because we have PS overlap to, to save his ass. Um, And yeah, again, hit. Like, you're, again, your positioning is not terrible, but, like, the fact that you doored in just nullifies it. Like, it was good. Like, you're staying out of the fight. You're staying out of the fray. You don't want to door in until your your team has started the go. And then you door in, and then you fear. And it gives them the least opportunity to do anything to you. Because you're out of range. And they have to commit stuff to do it. So it's like sometimes your positioning is good and sometimes it's bad. Um, but yeah, I mean, this this go was 100% warrior trinket if... If you guys didn't... Uh, didn't waste the DR number earlier, or at least if you didn't wait, if, if you'd have waited a little bit longer for the DR. Uh, you have a while here where you can put down dome. The rogue is like legged it. He's fucking gone, dude. Like the dome was never even on him. Um, what are you supposed to do? To be honest, the dome can already be down now. Like everything stacked. Like the moment he gets gripped in like that, you just throw dome on him, man. Like that. This is the go, right? The frost worm, the fucking random blind shit, like all that shit. Is this this comps go? So you can just throw the dome and you're gonna mitigate the most damage like that. Um instead the rogue feels unsafe because he has no dome and he starts trying to kite and you're like, oh man, I'm oom. So he's like, okay, I'm running, bro, and yeah, he just gets fucks fucking smashed. Um So yeah.
I think first game positioning was a lot better, but you're not pushing in at the correct time. This game, you're pushing it you, you, even at all in the first game. In this game, you're pushing in, but at the wrong times. Um, and then you're not moving back out of range um, enough, if that makes sense. You cancel a lot of times the last pennant hit with the shit. Are you, you cancelling the fourth tick? Okay, I, I honestly haven't even seen that shit yet. Be careful of that though. Um, honestly, your positioning has the potential to be good. Um, you're nearly there. Your defensive positioning is good. You just need to understand better when to go for the offensive positioning against different comps. Um, as opposed to Murat's positioning, who was playing at 2 to 2.2k, which was just giga terrible the entire time, all the time. So, you should be, you should be happy with that. There's, yes, there's, there's work to do, but you're like halfway there. Alf, thank you for the eight months, dude. Appreciate it. Um, again, cooldown usage, try to identify where the goes are for that specific comp. So, you know, this comp goes once a minute. You know, if you're positioning well, it's going with the grip. Um, and you know what it's roughly going to look like with the blind and the frost worm and potentially a hodge and chill streak. <laughs> Um, same thing with the boomy lock. It's going to look, it, it's going to be chill most of the time until the boomy pox incarn or convoke, which you need to try to stop, uh, or the warlock dark soul, which you need to try to purge, but don't overextend to do it. Only do it if you can do it from the safe spot. Um, other than that, you're just using cooldowns when they do. Um... Just trying to think of anything else useful to say, really. Do you have any questions? About stuff I've said so far? Anything that I've not, um, not made clear? Just trying to think. Yeah, I think that, that that on an individual level and um, on a team level, you guys need to try to go together, not individually. Don't just waste your fear on your own. Look at your team. Look at what they're trying to do. Talk to them uh, and ask if they're ready to do a go. And then make sure you all know before the game, talk before the game about what your role is on the go. Uh, and if you're having trouble doing your role on the go, then... Uh, you know, tell your team, say, look, I need more help doing this. Or, I, this is really hard for me to fear on this go. Maybe I can fear someone else, that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, for 1700, you're doing okay. Uh, keep at it. Try to clean up your goes and you guys will go 2k in no time. Like, no problem whatsoever. Yeah, you definitely want to have comms for RMP. Otherwise, it's going to be rough. Unless you have really good players that can see what the other players are doing and, and react to it. You kind of want comms to like talk ahead of time about what you're going to do so that um, so that you don't have to like react to the last minute and everything looks clean. But yeah, overall, some good points, some bad points. Right, I think we've got to bed. I think I'm done, so I think I'm beat, boys. <laughs>